Jody Arias facing the death penalty today was her turn to present any witnesses on her behalf. Anyone who could give this jury a reason for her to live. And no one takes the stand. No one says anything about Jody Arias. How will this absolute silence impact the eight men and four women who will decide if Jody lives or dies? Ryan Smith is with our studio jury here at HLN headquarters in Atlanta. Were they surprised that no one spoke on behalf of Jody? On the ground in Phoenix, in the middle of it all, HLN's Jane Velez Mitchell and Mike Galanos. Also joining us in Phoenix tonight, HLN legal correspondent and attorney Gene Casares and Arizona criminal defense attorney Monica Lindstrom. We've also lined up our experts tonight in studio, criminal defense attorneys Meg Strickler and Darren Cavanocchi. Here to help us with the law tonight, TV's Judge Glenda Hatchett. And in New York, former member of the Casey Anthony defense team, Linda Kenny Bodden. My goodness, what a day inside the courtroom. Mistrial motions, allegations of witness intimidation. But in the end, no one speaks up for convicted murderer Jody Arias. The state attacked expert witnesses in front of the jury with non-evidence designed to mislead. Witness intimidation began almost the, single, the very day that Miss Arias started her case, or at least those days when Miss Arias wasn't on the stand. The issue here is why Miss Womack is not here to testify. On two separate occasions, she failed to answer my questions. Specifically, the first occasion occurred when I started to talk about her drug use as it involved the witness and the defendant. At that point, she deferred and chose not to answer. When this court allows a prosecutor to personally attack witnesses and counsel, that breeds an environment where this sort of thing is endorsed. This court can only speculate as to why Ms. Wilmack is not here today. Ms. Wilmot and I would move to withdraw from the case yet again. Your motion to withdraw is denied. We will not be calling witnesses in the face given the court's ruling. Judge, the other thing we'd be asking for consistent with this court's ruling on both aspects of the motion for mistrial, the sentencing phase, we'd be asking a stay of these proceedings so we could seek special action relief. The motion for stay is denied. We are unable to proceed today. Please return tomorrow morning at 9.30. Please remember the admonition. You are excused. So a lot of passion from Kurt and Ermey. No mistrial, no stay, and now nobody's speaking on behalf of Jody. So ladies and gentlemen, I gotta ask you right off the bat, yes or no, you were surprised that no one spoke up for Jody. Tell me yes if you were surprised, no if you weren't. Okay, it's mixed. We got a lot of no's in the back, and we got a few yeses. You were, Chantal, why were you surprised? Why wouldn't someone want to speak for her, especially, you know, she's gonna die, and I, I, I'm, I'm stunned that no one stepped up to... Why do you think her mother's not speaking up for her? That, as a mom, I can't even begin to fathom why you wouldn't try to speak for your daughters on your daughter's behalf. I, I, I'm stunned. It's stunning. I, and Janet, you know, you, you were here with us early. I know you had some strong feelings against Jody. Now you say you're not surprised that no one, no friends, no family, nobody spoke up for her? Yeah, because I think that her family does not want to be you know, cross-examined by Juan. They don't want to be cross-examined by... Well, you're taking a risk to try to save her life, though. Yeah, but Juan, Juan's the best, and I just think that they would be, they would be called out. I All think right. they'd be called out. Wow. I mean, you would have to face cross-examination, but still, you're trying to save your daughter's life. Or, it's just something we haven't seen before. Gene Casares, what was it like in that courtroom when no one spoke for her? Well, it was just electric. I have never seen the defense on fire like they were. Kirk Nurmi, I mean, I think you just saw it. He was on fire. And the other side of the story of why Patty Womack didn't testify, brought out by the prosecutor, that there were two alleged issues that she could possibly be prosecuted on, alleged drug use and also pictures receiving money and for some reason not reporting income that should have been reported. She got her own attorney, one was given to her, but she made the decision that she did not want to testify. The defense says witness intimidation, there were threats against her life, that's why she didn't do it. Prosecution believes she didn't want to be cross-examined. All right, any reason why Daryl Brewer didn't testify? Well, what the defense said was, and it just seemed a burst of emotion, but I think he's preserving the record, that the jury has a right 
to hear the whole life story of Jody Aries. And Patty Womack was a childhood friend that would begin the childhood knowledge of Jody Aries. Dale Brewer, once she got an adult, pre-Travis. And without Patty Womack, it's not the full story. And it denies Jody Arias the right to a fair sentencing hearing. All right, Gene, thank you. You know, Vinny, I, I can't remember the last time I saw a death penalty case at this stage, and no one speaks on behalf of the defendant. Yeah. Silence. Silence. Yeah. Silence. <laughs> and the only one speaking on behalf of Jody Aries is going to be Jody Arias? Really? <laughs> one word from my experts tonight. One word to describe what happened today out in Maricopa County. Meg Strickler. Wow. Darren Cavanoke. Tragic sanity. Combination, Vinny. <laughs> Tragic Tragic and totally insane. Where do you get your dictionary <laughs> from? Well, the limits need a word. Never, you gotta, you gotta, never <laughs> play words with friends with this guy. <laughs> Judge Hatcher. Never play Scrabble with One me word. either. Strategic. Absolutely. Uh, Mike Galanos, one word to describe what happened today out there. Pathetic. <laughs> Jane Velez Mitchell. Implosion. Gene Casares, one word to describe it. A pellet. <laughs> <laughs> Monica Lindstrom, one word. I can't say more than one word. <laughs> you got to get the meaning. <laughs> Monica Lindstrom, one word. Stunning. Linda Kenny Bodden, one word to describe it. I'm writing a book with Darren. Jody Versal. <laughs> Jody Versal. Thank you. And you can That's use Trajan word. Sanity. Yeah, let me go back to Jane Velez Mitchell. She had something to add to all of this. She, oh, we didn't hear her answer? I would like oh. to add, what, what do you want me to add? Because I got to tell you, this is one of the craziest days I have ever seen in a courtroom. It, 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 it just did not make sense today. Mm -hmm. This did not. did not make sense. I don't know how she survives this, and she's putting all her chips on herself. Yeah. Yeah. Has she looked in the mirror? Has she watched any of the videotapes? Has she seen any of her interviews? Did she listen to the verdict? My goodness. we got a lot to talk about tonight. HLN After Dark. Caring, loving person. How long a period of time did you date Miss Arias altogether? Just about four years. That was Jody's ex, Daryl Brewer, testifying during the guilt phase of the case. This is the guy that Jody Arias left to be with Travis Alexander. She was living with Jody Arias, yet when he came back, he still had so many great things to say about Jody Arias on the stand, and it was difficult for him to testify about the gas cans. He's the one that had the evidence on it, and he had to, he had to admit to that. And he was, I think, ready to testify, or we thought he was. Let me go to Jane Velez Mitchell. She has a lot of information about Daryl Brewer. What's, what's his status? Is he out there right now? Was he ready to go, Jane? He was in the same hotel I'm staying at, in the lobby area, sitting there waiting for the phone call. Uh, two of my producers saw him and spoke to him, and he was never called. And he waited and waited and waited, and he was never called. And then he later, just a little while ago, spoke to the Arizona Republic and said that he would have tested, uh, testified. He would have said that uh, he thought that Jody was a kind, loving person. He trusted Jody with his young son. And and that he felt that she changed radically after she joined PPL and uh, that she became unrecognizable, that she had begun to engage in magical thinking. He was also going to say, if given the chance, that he thought that she could remain productive behind bars and uh, presumably uh, say that uh, he thinks that her life should be spared. But he never got that opportunity. They never called him. It was almost as if the defense team had a tantrum and said, well, you won't let us, you won't give us a mistrial, therefore we just, we're going to just take our toys and walk away. And I don't know if that's in the best interest of this defendant. Yeah, to me that was, and this is the one witness who testified that I, I said, you know, he sounds like a, a good guy. 
He sounds credible when he was on the witness end. He admitted what he had to admit. Um, let me play for you. This is from Nancy Grace's show. The other witness who was supposed to testify but didn't because either she was intimidated or she had some stuff that she didn't want to come out on the witness stand and would have had to take in the fifth. Patty Womack's her name. She was on Nancy Grace's show. Take a listen. What was she like growing up? Well, what was she like growing up? Um, she was amazing. Um, she was kind person. She was funny. Um, like everybody knows, she was a beautiful artist and photographer. She she was athletic, actually. Um, she's extremely funny. And um, just everybody loved her. In fact, everybody just wanted choose a great person. Everybody wanted to be Jody's friend. All right, so this is a witness who chose not to testify. I understand that, but if you've got one there ready, willing, and able, and you've got an ex testifying for you, why? Why would he not testify? Yeah. I think what's happening here is there's something behind the scenes we don't know about, because how could you possibly allow zero witnesses to testify? That is wrong, and it's setting the stage where they asked for an immediate appellate review, and the judge said no. And so perhaps they are taking their marbles and running and saying, you know what, we're waiting for some other thing going on here. And they hope that there'll be some sort of appellate issue here by mm -hmm. having no one testify. It's the only thing I can think of that would make sense. This is worse than the Black Sox scandal. Like they're, <laughs> like they're throwing it. Well, if it's a tactical choice and they think that they can do better on the appellate issue than they would have done with that witness. And by the way, as you pointed out, this seems like a credible witness. Somebody who is reluctant to give information that hurt Jody, th then th I think that's a bad tactical move. But what's potentially worse is if Jody's the one that's running the show, and the reason that we didn't hear from that witness is because Jody said, oh no, you know, I want to get up there and do it, then the insane are truly running that asylum. Yeah, well, I, you know, but I, <laughs> that may well be, but I think at the end of the day that this was just a poor strategy, and I think that mm. we have to, if you're a defense attorney, I think then you have to go in with the end game in mind. And so they were so, I think, focused on the guilt phase that they didn't think about what would happen if she was found guilty and the mitigation. So they didn't have a strategy but for it. But they had that no. mitigation. Yeah. 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 But we're trained on this. this. But her job yeah. is but, but, to but, think about I that. Think, I, I don't, you got a crazy client who is not <laughs> listening. I don't think job is a mitigation so, expert. You sit there for five months and then you do nothing. And you get paid for it. Can you believe that? Wait, let's get some comments. Let's get some comments from our jury. Heather, I see you shaking your head over here. I mean, I just find it just completely odd, but just the fact that she has no one representing her at all. I mean, who doesn't have one friend that will sit there and look out for you? Just one person. And it just shows her character in general. Now, I do believe that, you know, the media has probably spooked some of these people into not, you know, helping her out. I know that if I was her friend and mm -hmm. her only friend and I was going to sit there and talk, you know, right. help her out, I'd be kind of afraid about what was going to happen to me next. You'd be concerned. I mean, Maybe that's what Patty Womack was thinking. Mm -hmm. And then the other part of this, the cross. other part that we have to acknowledge, though, guys, and Heather, you got a great point. The other part we have to acknowledge, Maybe she really wants death. Remember, she talked about that in the interview, and we're going to talk about that next. Oh. You know, I've been critical of the defense through this trial, but today, Nermi, he fell on his sword. He said, basically, I'm ineffective. He has said, I'm ineffective, 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 ineffective. That's the, the biggest risk a lawyer could take, and he's setting up an appeal for his client. He put his interests behind his client's interests. say exactly what she wants to say but we have her kind of going back and forth at times I think you can pick things out of her testimony and what she said that makes you believe that she wants to continue to live but then her actual words are I want to die and God will be the judge of me etc etc so with her what we do know is anything's possible she could always flip back and forth but she's going to do whatever she wants to do and she's not going to give in to anybody yeah. the judge is chomping at the bit here I am, I am. Um, my theory is that if she really wanted death that she could have weighed this whole sentencing we would not have gone through this at all and that she could have then had a competency hearing as to whether she was competent to say i want death and so i think this is all a game but i think she's playing russian roulette with her mm. life with the jury but hang on a second hang on I 
for the integrity of the system, we've got to look at Jody Arias and protect Jody Arias from herself. And I don't say this because I'm fond of Jody Arias. So before you start tweeting me and telling me that I'm crazy and you hate me, just simmer down for a second. Whether we're talking about her having PTSD or 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 whatever the mental health issue, because we've heard a bunch of different flavors of two scoops of crazy from a bunch of different experts, right? But we can all agree that she is not right. So the idea that we would trust Jody Arias but, but to what, never what, what, what criminal there. is right? But what criminal what is right? None of them are right. No, None of these killers are right, Darren. Let me go back on my appellate issue. I agree with juror number 12. Now, wouldn't it be interesting if we just hear crickets chirping tomorrow and no wouldn't that talks. be fascinating? Oh. Well, we and shall see. your mom up there begging them, please don't kill my that's, baby? See, that's the that's, crazy that's thing. That's what she needs, but it's not going to happen. Jody Harris is the only one. It's all set to happen oh. at 1230 tomorrow. You'll see it on HLN. This is HLN After Dark. problem the defense has created for themselves. One of the mitigating factors would have been her mental state, but they said she was okay when the prosecutor said she was nuts. So they put themselves in the position of having no mental health mitigation. There are so many things that I'd like to say to them, and I just, I don't think that, that they are, they in any way would, would like to hear it, or that they're in any position to even want to receive it. Um, but I've said this before and, and I'll continue to pray for this and that is that I hope they can find peace. I hope that now that a verdict has been rendered that they're able to find peace, some sense of peace. I don't think they'll ever find the peace that they would like, but maybe, they, maybe they'll be able to have greater peace now. Jody Arias talking about Travis Alexander's family. I hope that they find peace. But you know what I didn't hear? I didn't hear an apology. So I got a question for this jury. Yes or no, Jody will apologize tomorrow. Yes or no? Look at that. All no's. And Heather on the end hesitated a little bit. All no's. She's not going to apologize. But I want to ask you why you hesitated. Um, I... I don't know, just seeing the last kind of script right there, I, I saw a little mercy, you know, just a little sympathy, a little human right okay. there. But, I mean, I could, totally could be wrong. This woman is just a, a weeble wobble. I All mean, right. I have no idea what she's going to say. <laughs> David, weeble wobble, wow. David. She, I, I don't think she's going she's gonna to go in that direction. I think she's just going to kind of allude to some things about how it could be and yada yada they could be find some peace and blah 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 and and not get to any specifics at make all. it about her not about yeah. them yeah i think if she says she's sorry somehow in her mind she's a mini mm -hmm. it you know what i'm saying ah so if she apologizes and that's an interesting yes. point guys if yeah. she apologizes yeah. maybe she's admitting to doing something wrong right. and she doesn't yeah. feel like she did anything wrong and she's got to preserve the appellate process that yeah. appeals so she's walking here, here's, here's jody Arias's yeah, problems right. let's, let's go back way back back in the time it's All the right. 70s <laughs> it's a tuesday night and we're watching happy days and there's the one episode <laughs> where arthur fonzarelli made a mistake and he had to admit that he was <laughs> 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 And he was unable to do it. That's how I see Jody Aries. Jane Velez Mitchell, how do you see Jody Aries in terms of apologies tomorrow? Well, I don't know what she's going to say, Vinny, but I think there is a big, big battle about it. Think about it. Today, her attorneys asked for a mistrial. When they didn't get that, they said, then take us off the case. Judge, we don't want to be here. The judge said no. Then the judge said, well, I think it's uh, time now for Jody Arias' allocution. Oh, well, may, may, may we approach, Your Honor. Next thing you know, they're in chambers. What are they talking about? Imagine the judge sitting there, Judge Stevens. There's Jody. There's her two attorneys. Why are they arguing? We all knew this was coming. We all knew this day would arrive. It's because of what Jody wants to say, and her attorneys are so upset about it that they want off the case. What could that be? I think that it has to be something very controversial, like I want to die. Yeah, let me go to Gene Casares. Gene, do we know anything about that? Do we have any idea what is really, really going on behind those closed doors? Well, I think that the motion to, uh, in regard to ineffective assistance counsel, they, they cited the case law that it was based on, and I remember a motion that we actually saw 
uh, in the past. This is not the first time they've asserted that motion, and it has to do with, because of the circumstances, they're not able to actively and zealously represent their client, and that just went to the basis of everything that uh, transpired today. So I think they're just really preserving that record in that area. You know, last week we talked about what Jody Arias should say, and Darren, you did a great job last week, by the way. Tonight, what I want to do is talk about what Jody Arias will say. I'll get things rolling, though. I'll be Jody Arias first, oh, if you don't mind. Oh, I got to see this. Is my way? Oh, <laughs> All right. Is that how you're going to walk up to the stand? No, she has that thing on her leg so she can't run. Oh, good. You know about that? Oh, on her knee, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. They're not that heavy. <laughs> I know you I, I hate gotta get me. a picture of this. Yeah, I have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know you hate me. I, I would hate me too. I mean, you guys have been here for five months. You, you had to listen to me for 18 days, and I didn't want to go to trial. I didn't want to go to trial, and I didn't want to put you through this, but it, it happened because of Juan over there. I'm a Mormon. Death is freedom for me. But I'm not going to stand here and, and tell you or ask you what to do, because that's a decision for you. That's a decision you'll have to live with. Whatever that decision is, is fine with me. But you'll have to live with it. All I can say is I'm really sorry for what happened. And um, I just hope someday all of us can, can get past this and have some closure. But again, whatever decision you want to make, that is fine with me. It, you'll have to live with it. Wow. Ooh. Let me get a quick poll. Does she get life? Yes, no, if life. Whoa. Yes, no, and you know wow. what? That's, and, and number nine's stalling there, but it's oh, really? eight to four. And remember, it only takes one. It only takes one to hang it. So you know what? That's interesting. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. And also, we're going to get into her crazy behavior, interesting behavior, stuff the jury didn't see. That's coming up. Well, no matter what Jody Arias says, one issue is believability. Is the jury going to believe anything? You know who they would have believed? Her mom. She would have brought authenticity, pain, and tears. But that jury and the rest of us will never hear it. You know, what we're not talking about is the fact that over 50%, up to 68% of death penalty convictions are reversed. And on death penalty sentence, that's even higher. So no matter what the result is here, the likelihood is it's going to be reversed. I guess that's really all I needed. Sorry. Don't roll the tape yet. <laughs> um, boy, this is really hard. Uh, I'm trying to think if I want to say this or not. <laughs> Is it because I'm not crying? <laughs> no jury is going to convict me. I think I did a little tilt on my head and gave a little smile. Why did you want to speak out today? Um, I kind of feel like since I've been incarcerated, it's, it's almost like there's been a proverbial duct tape over my mouth. Took it as a compliment. <laughs> you still your makeup, Jody Will we see the bizarre Jody Arias tomorrow in front of the jury? Let me go to Darren Cavanoki on that. Yeah. Darren, do you expect any bizarre here, behavior you, you know, uh, from you, Jody Arias? You never know what you're going to get from Jody Arias. I think she's always the wild card. I think we can always agree whatever it is, it's unpredictable. All right, let me go out to Monica Lindstrom, who is out in Arizona. <laughs> Monica, what do you expect? Bizarre behavior from Jody? Will, could that possibly seep into what she does in her presentation? I don't think it'll be bizarre, and here's the reason why. We've seen lots of different Jodies during this trial. We've seen her in the 48 Hours interview, we've seen her in the After Verdict interview, and we've seen her at trial. So I don't think there'll be anything new. She, nothing bizarre. It'll be based on what she's done in the past. If she really wants death, she will disrespect Travis Alexander and bring up at least 
partially some of the things that he's done. But if she wants life, she will stay away from him and she'll talk about how much she wants life and maybe how much she loved him. Bizarre? I don't think so. But it all depends on what she decides to do in the morning. Mike Galanos, what do you think? Is there a chance that something completely bizarre or strange happens during this allocution? Shocking, yes. Surprising, yes. I think that's in her repertoire. This is it. L look at the clip you just played, Vinny. I mean, she loves it. This is her moment. I could have sworn today when the proceedings wrapped up, she had a look on her face of confidence. This is her time. This is her moment. I don't think she's going to do anything like, like rip Travis Alexander or anything like that. Could she break into song? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that, that I think it's possible, too. I really do. I, uh, Jane Velez Mitchell, because this is a woman, loves the spotlight, loves the attention, and I think she's smart enough to realize this may be it. This may be her last opportunity to speak in public, to be Jody Arias, the, the notorious killer. Well, I think she has two ways to go. Sitting there in her jail cell, she is at a fork in the road. She can continue with her really self-destructive life pattern, or she can finally make a turn at the very 11th hour and say, I am going to change my attitude. I'm going to admit that I was wrong. I'm going to apologize. I'm going to be humble. I'm going to essentially get on my knees metaphorically and beg for my life. Does she have it in her to make that change in this phase of her life at this stage? If this won't make her change, nothing will. But I don't know that she's capable of it. Gene, I don't expect anything normal tomorrow. I don't expect anything that we would necessarily expect. My question, though, is how strange will it get? How bizarre will it get? Do you think there's a chance that there's some sort of outrageous thing she does to kind of, you know, go out in a blaze of glory, knowing that this is my last chance to do anything that people will notice and remember me by? Vinny, let's look at the facts. When I was sitting in that courtroom today and the judge said, okay, you're not going to call any witnesses, but your client, Ms. Arias, is going to allocute. And then suddenly the attorneys went up to sidebar and then the mitigation expert went to Jody and the two attorneys came down, Wilmot and Nurmi, and they're just excitedly talking amongst each other. And then after many more things that happened, the judge said, that's it for the day. There's something going on, and, and, and I think the defense is really going to try to ask her not to say anything. I agree with you. She loves the limelight, but it won't happen until it happens. Let's see what, what tomorrow brings. Wow. And, and I'm wondering if later tonight, if Darren Kavanoki will be singing Oh Holy Night. <laughs> More after dark. Oh, Darren, after you should have done your makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I think all of you are drink, drinking something called Jody Kool-Aid out there in Atlanta. I don't know what you're doing, but you know what she's going to say tomorrow? She's going to say, I love Travis, and you're going to send me to be with him, and that's going to be the ultimate dagger into the family. Travis was my big brother. He was killed. I remember walking out my back door, screaming, crying at the sky, asking why. I am one of Travis's younger sisters. I called my grandma's house and my sister Tanisha answered the phone. She screamed at me. She said, Samantha, Travis is dead. We can never get him back. I've had dreams of my brother all curled up in the shower, thrown in there, left to rot for days, all alone. How much did he scream? What was he saying? What was the last thing he saw before his eyes closed? Losing Travis has completely destroyed the overall health of our family. Travis was our strength, our constant beacon of hope, our motivation. And his presence has been ripped from our lives. I don't want to have to see my brother's murderer anymore. Our minds are permanently stained 
with the images of our poor brother's throat slit from ear to ear. Travis was the glue in our family. Our family has not been together since Travis has been gone. It's simply too hard to think of that one empty chair. That was some of the most powerful moments that we've seen in that courtroom. We talk about Jody. Look at the pain the Alexander family has had to deal with because of Jody Arias. So you know what? I want to ask you this question. Do you think Jody's going to talk about Travis in her elocution tomorrow? Yes or no? Okay, a lot of no's, but a few yeses. And just pick one. Okay, we'll let you waver. Your no. Okay, I, I want to go to our yeses. Because my question is, Bonnie, what is she going to say? She's going to say that she loved him. I think she, I think she wants to live. I don't think she's going to ask for the death penalty. So she's going to really play up how much she cared for him. Okay. And, and get that sympathy. You know, I really care for him. This was a horrible thing that happened. Because I don't think she's sorry. She'll never say she's sorry. But she'll talk about how Absolutely. much she cared for Absolutely. him. Okay. Um, Noelle, let me ask you. You say yes as well. And so what, what will she say? I think she's going to say that, that, that she loved him very much. Mm -hmm. That... Um, not that she's sorry, but she's going to just appeal to the people's thought of that's how I loved him so much. I just couldn't, you know, I, it, it was a crazy moment, uh, you know, something like that, I think is what she's going to say. But this is all about her. Okay. We have to understand this circus is about her. She's all going to do everything for to look at her. I am the going to go those, Let me ask you this. Are those tears that we, that I think maybe we saw, maybe we didn't there, are those tears that are in her mind about how she feels? Are they real? Are they fake? In other words, does she tell herself that she feels bad? No. Uh, you know what? I think that if she loved him or she convinced herself that she loved him, because she doesn't love herself, so she can't love him as she says she does. But mm -hmm. I think that she, her tears are more of, oh, my God, um, he's gone. I'm by myself, and I'm here sitting, and I'm going to go to death for all this. For all that I've done. Yes. And you know what? I, I will find it very interesting if she talks about him, because I think our jury is right. I think she might talk about how she loves them, guys, but will she ever say, I'm sorry? I don't see it. No. Absolutely. And then the real danger Absolutely here not. is when you listen to Stephen and Samantha speak, you could, I mean, that... It, that's credibility. Right. Mm -hmm. That's real. It's yes. authentic. That's authentic yes. is, is the word for and it. And sincere. And she has been unable to be that. Yeah. So if she starts talking about Travis Alexander, the comparison is going to be so easy for this jury to do. No, but with Jody, what we, Jody Arias, what we've seen her do is, is model what she thinks appropriate behavior is. It looks like when she's, when she's crying, first of all, there's no moisture. There's no tears rolling down her cheeks. But it's in these situations where it's almost like it leaves you with the feeling that she's crying because that's what she thinks a normal person would do in that situation. It's completely inauthentic. I think it's staged. I think the crying is staged. I've never bought it. I think that that's her way of trying to connect with the joy and trying to evoke some sympathy. But she's not yeah, connecting but it doesn't at work. all. And she's not. Yeah, I mean, it's not. Her activity and her face, where everyone yeah. thinks she's got a flat affect. Even yeah. when she's yeah. crying, it's completely flat. And, and the There's contrast, no, right? Yeah, We're talking no about expression. Stephen and Samantha who've been through so, so much, much. Absolutely mm -hmm. heartbreaking. Absolutely. absolutely. And another heartbreaking story today and really our thoughts and prayers tonight are with all the victims and their families impacted by today's devastating tornado in Oklahoma. Uh, our thoughts are with you tonight. HLN will have complete coverage in the morning with uh, Robin Mead and Morning Express.
Oh, there were reasons for Detective Esteban Flores to speak with Jody Arias on that one. But she's going to speak tomorrow for the last time, 1230 here on HLN. You know, last week we talked about what should she say. Tonight we're focusing on what will she say. Right. So, uh, Judge Hatchett, why don't you play right. the role of Jody Arias? Go All over right. and, and tell this jury what All you right. believe Jody will. Arias will say. I will. No hate mail. No hate mail. And remember, it's Jody Arias, not Judge Hatchett. Everybody in this jury loves you. And I love them. So. Thank you. I loved, I loved Travis. I loved him. I loved him with all my heart. I know I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. I've done a lot of things wrong. And I've lied. I know I've lied. I've admitted that I've lied. But I'm telling you that one thing I've never lied about is that I love that man to the soul. And so now what I'm saying to you is that that moment I really thought, and I know you found differently, but I really thought that my life was on the line and that I defended myself, but I didn't want him to die. But it's your choice, and it'll be on you as to whether I live or I die. Thank you. Hmm. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, and you go out with the... It's like a, it's like a I movie. I think, she, a wait, I think she has a migraine. Does anyone have a migraine? I have a migraine headache. That was like a movie. Wow, Academy <laughs> Awards, straight up. All right. I was uh, in the drama club in high school. Uh, clearly. We can tell. You did not need to tell. I, and I was a litigator. Right, jury, right? I used to litigate. Jury, what do you think? Would you, would you in that case, spare her life with that argument? No. Oh, oh. oh. Hey, this doesn't reflect poorly on you, Judge. It's the argument, right? <laughs> Janet, what do you think? Well, I just think that we are all logical, and she's crazy, and so mm -hmm. I think whatever we're thinking, she's mm -hmm. thinking. Yep. She's not thinking because we're logical, and she's crazy, so we can't possibly think what she's going to say because she's crazy, and we're not. Okay. So. We can't understand her because we're logical, and she's crazy, so we can't understand... I sort of but, You know what? No, no, it, it's like it's like what yeah. my dog must think trying to understand my head. You know, yes. my dog just can't figure me out. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Okay, thing. Marcia, one of our first time jurors, been following the case from day one. Quick thought on that. I think she will ask for the death penalty because mm -hmm. she's asked for it twice already. And for her to turn her back on it now is not her mode of, emperor, of, of acting. Okay. So I think, besides, there's a very fine line between love and hate. Yeah. And... That's, and, and there's indifference, and that's what you got from Travis. So. It's a good point. It's a good point. Plus, there you'd be asking them, hey, I don't agree with what you decided, jury, but still give me life. We'll have to see what she says. You yeah. know what, though? Second hour of After Dark starts now. Hey, hey. You have a problem with the truth. Tell me the truth, don't you? I would love to help you in any way that I can. Okay. That wasn't the truth. No, that was not the truth. Why didn't you tell the truth? I was ashamed. I didn't want my family to see me admitting to something like that. It was hurting me to lie. I don't know. I was trying to kill myself, I think. Ma'am. I was in a strong state of denial. Ma'am. If I told the truth, then I would have to explain why. And if I had to explain why, then I would have to go back through our whole history. So what you're saying is, I guess, is that you were being a good Samaritan, right? In lying. My mind wasn't right during that whole period. Because I'd never killed anyone before. I think shame would be more correct. All right, let's go with the word shame, then. Travis's family deserves to know what happened. I called his grandmother and, and um, you know, I, I expressed my sympathies to her. And Did they deserve that lie? I guess not. Alternative was worse. With regard to Mr. Burns, you did kiss him, though, right? Yes, I did. Uh, at one point, I had my hands on her, her, her thighs. It could be that he did place his hands between your legs, right? No, could be that he was full of crap. He didn't go there. So, and you're the same person that's telling us that he's full of crap that has lied to him, right? Yes. During this event where he choked you, um, there are no medical reports, are there? No. Very soft kisses, right? That's right. Doesn't talk about anything with the backhand, does it? You didn't tell anybody about it, right? Mm -mm, no. Is there a police report? No. Are there any photographs? No photos. 
All we have is your word, right? That's right. Jody's last stand tomorrow inside the courtroom in Maricopa County, Arizona. Her last chance to speak to the jury before they decide life or death. Now, which Jody Aries will show up? What will she say? How long will she speak? Will she cry? Will she blame someone else? Ryan Smith is with our studio jury here at HLN headquarters in Atlanta. What do they think will happen tomorrow? On the ground in Phoenix, in the middle of it all, HLN's Jane Velez Mitchell and Mike Galanos. Also in Phoenix tonight, HLN legal correspondent and attorney Gene Casares and Arizona criminal defense attorney Monica Lindstrom. We've also lined up our own experts tonight in studio. Criminal defense attorneys Meg Strickler and Darren Cavanoke, and here to help us with the law, TV's Judge Glenda Hatchett. And in New York, former member of the Casey Anthony defense team, Linda Kenny Bodden. So, what will Jody Arias say, and how will she say it? All right, so, good question. What will she say? How will she say it, Vinny? I got another question, though. Is she gonna blame other people? What about that? We've seen her put things on other people. What about the ninjas? A lot going on with Jody Arias in that vein. Remember that? All right, so let's take that question. Will Jody Arias blame other people, yes or no? No, 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 says Kathleen. I'm gonna get to you in a second. Okay, you are stalling today. I'm not going to hold it against you. Why'd you start when you said yes? Well, you know, she's cray-cray, so you never know what she's going to come up with. So it's been kind of like, what do you know? What can you guess that Jody's going to say? So tonight it's been like, you never know what's going to come out of her mouth. You never so know when it comes never. to Jody Aries. Carl, you were one of our reasonable doubters when we had you on a couple weeks ago. Now you're feeling like, yeah, she may blame others. Of, of course. Uh, you know, she, she's tried to make this out to be a self-defense thing, so she's going to try and blame tra Travis. If she, if, if she blames anybody, she'll never take any responsibility. Never take any responsibility. <laughs> what about a Jane Velez Mitchell? She's been playing the blame game in the past. You remember the story about the ninjas. Is she going to do that today? Is she going to blame tomorrow? Is she going to blame Travis, maybe? I think she has to play the blame game because she's really boxed herself into a corner, Ryan. If, if she suddenly says, you know what, I did this, I planned this, I did something evil, that hurts her on appeal. So she really can't play that card anymore. The fact is she's boxed herself in with her lies. I don't think she has much choice but to kind of either be general, talk philosophically about her love, as we've heard some incredible renditions, uh, or... Uh, <laughs> Um, she can blame, play the blame blame again and, and start, you know, essentially blaming everyone for her behavior and try to be the martyr. I think she wants to go out as a martyr. That's where I think she sees herself in a dramatic fashion. She's looking at her life as if it's a movie. And now she's going to play the martyr and go out, you know, with a bang that way. That's a good point. It kind of reminds me when Judge Hatchett was giving her argument, go out with that hand on the forehead, <laughs> mm -hmm. walking out like that. Un unbelievable. Let me go to Gene Casares, who's also out, out in Phoenix. Gene, and I'm wondering, we didn't hear from them in court, um, Jody Arias' mother and father, but we saw them in the courtroom today. Have they had any sort of interaction or contact with their daughter, the convicted murderer? You know, late today... Uh, they went to the Australia jail to visit their daughter holding hands and then they came out so they have been there and this is the first time that Jody's father has been here in months I mean he was probably there in, in the middle of the trial but this is a big deal for her father to come here because he is ill and, and Jean the rest of the family's there too right the uh, the brother was it Joey the little brother and her sister as well Yes, and they're young, Vinny, because I saw them in the courtroom. They're really young, and, and they were in the courtroom right in the front row. So the whole family is there. The whole family is, is not testifying. I just can't believe that they're not. I mean, if little Joey gets up on the stand and says, please don't kill my yeah. sister. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that could reach just one juror, and that's one all they need. All but need. what I need is one word. Just one word, Kavanoke, you hear me? One word. He's not to capable just, of one word. One English I word. Oh. Oh. Yeah. One word to describe what will happen tomorrow. 
One word to describe what will happen tomorrow, Meg Strickland. Oh, oh I'll make you think for a minute here. <laughs> what will happen tomorrow? Nothing. Nothing. Darren Kevin O'Connell. Oh, I'm going with the classic. Tragethetic. <laughs> Tra tragic and pathetic. He, he can't help himself. <laughs> he can't help yeah. himself. We're working it's the blood on that's rushing to my head from the last hour. Judge, one word. <laughs> Shocking. Shocking. I believe that. Shocking. Mike Galanos, one word to describe what will happen out there tomorrow. What's his name, the guy with the camera? Surprise, surprise, surprise. I'm quoting Gomer Pyle. You quoted the font. We're going to get a surprise. <laughs> Jane Velez Mitchell, one word to describe what will happen tomorrow. Shakespearean. <laughs> oh. right. I can't even follow these words anymore. <laughs> Gene Casares, one word to describe what will happen tomorrow. Unpredictable. I agree with that. Monica Lindstrom, one word. Death. Ooh. She's thinking verdict. <laughs> going to a verdict. Linda Kenny Bond, one word to describe what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, going with Darren again. Suicide by allocution. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We shall see. We've got a lot to talk about here on After Dark. Don't go anywhere, folks. Tomorrow's the big day. 12.30 here on HLN Live. Jody Arias speaking to the jury directly. You know, her looking them in the eyes, allocuting. What will she say? How long will it take? Who will she blame? And will she cry? I feel like since I've been incarcerated, it's it's almost like there's been a proverbial duct tape over my mouth, and and um, I haven't been able to say anything. Um, there have been a, a lot of people that have been speaking um, out and, and saying things, um, you know, on their side. And there isn't this isn't a, this isn't a two-sided story. This is a multifaceted story. Um, there are many sides to this story, um, and I just don't feel like mine has been represented. What do you want people to? So she doesn't feel like her story's been represented, but it was represented in court. The jury heard it. They decided she was guilty of first-degree murder, and now they're going to determine whether she lives or dies. So, Ryan, 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 yeah. can I just take the proverbial duct tape off of Darren Kavanoki's mouth? What? He's got it on. I'm going to remove it. Ow! <laughs> Uh, I didn't know there was a proverb about duct tape no. over someone's mouth. Yeah. What proverb? What would you call that, that Darren? Exactly. A tragic comedy? I don't know. <laughs> it's a good thing you have a mustache. All right, right, let me get to this jury. I got a very important question for this jury that I want to ask, and it's based on what you just saw of Jody. Oh, there's so many facets to this story. I haven't heard mine told yet. She doesn't really drip with remorse, does she? But tomorrow, if she showed that remorse, couldn't that change the picture? Is she going to show remorse tomorrow, yes or no? No. No, 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 no. Oh. Yes. 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 How about that? All no's, one yes. And I know you're not just being contrarian. Well, no, she's an actress, so, I mean, everything's going to be played up to the 10th degree. And she's a performer, so why not? She, she's always going to be the victim. You so know? she's going to perform. Absolutely. And her crying that she's done for the past month, mm -hmm. that, like they said, she tries to be human. It's not there. She's wiping tearless tears. Okay. So, so yeah. she'll, she'll put on a performance. But Kathleen, I want to come to you, one of our new jurors, okay. juror number nine. You're not nervous, are you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be. Because I got a question for you. Can't she just get up there? You said no. Can't she just get up there and say, I'm sorry for your loss? That shows remorse. Has she said, I'm sorry yet? No. No. And she's not going to start What's tomorrow. What's going to change it? No. Not a, she's nothing. not going to start. All right. It's going to be short to the point, and she's out of there. Short is, that, is no. something I've never heard identified with Jody Arias speaking in front of a group. <laughs> no. What do you think, Dorothy? I, I think she's just going to stand up. She's going to blame everyone else. She's going to say she mm. loves Travis. She's not going to, because she's, she's got the appeals to go through. So she okay. has to watch what she's going to say. Yeah. She has to throw everyone else under the bus, not herself, for her appeals. Because she all, doesn't want to die. Yeah. Okay, so it's all about the appeals for now. She doesn't want to die. But yeah. still, you guys think she won't say anything, show any remorse whatsoever? I, I think it's, it's, it's what is remorse? How do you define remorse? I don't think it gets to real remorse and really apologizing for a murder. Right. 
This is what I want to do, though. What will Jody Arias say to the jury? That's our task here tonight. Meg Strickler, you're mm -hmm. up, playing the role of Jody Arias. All Not right. what should she say, but what will she say tomorrow? What that duct tape for? Let me back up. I'm taking <laughs> the proverbial duct tape off. I'm so excited to be able to talk to you directly. I've been through so much. You don't understand. That night was just a fog. I wasn't in my state of mind. I... Forgive me. <laughs> I have so much time in, in my cell every day. I didn't want any of this to happen. And this shouldn't have happened. And I don't understand why I got the death penalty. But if you... I wanted to show you before I walked away my art. My art! <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's scary. Okay, it's not, it's, no. No, it's not funny, because that's like scary. <laughs> I mean, that there are freaks. That might be like the most that. accurate. It's yeah. 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 scary. And you know yeah. what? There's a pretty good chance that that could happen tomorrow. Yes or no, does that argument, whatever we just heard, <laughs> would that spare her life? Do it again. No, yes or no, yes or no. 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 All no's. Wait, wait, wait. We have a yes here wavering, David. And by the way, David is an expert at reading body language, so maybe he was reading Meg's body language, channeling Jody. Mag, you were channeling her so well. It was, just, it, was uh, it was, it was, it brought tears to my own eyes to see that type of performance. You should, you should get a, a, a dagger. But why did that win like the day for you? Why did that possibly? Why would that be something that would possibly keep her off death row? Well, because I, I think that someone is going to connect with it. There's lots of people in the juries that that uh, are are looking for something, and if that, if the crazy card is played and that was it then uh, I don't know maybe she really wants some more artwork from Jody wow just... so maybe that artwork wins the day the little <laughs> funky looking picture of Travis okay or whatever that was all right well I'll tell you what you never know what's going on with Jody you never know what to expect and that's why we'll have to really see what she's going to offer tomorrow we got more after dark coming up you know this trial has become I'm waiting for my close-up, Mr. DeMille, Sunset Boulevard, when it should be her mother and father. Have mercy on my child and let her live. You did not shoot Travis. No, I've never even shot a real gun. You did not stab him 27 I've never, times. No, that's, that's heinous. Or I've never. Or slit his throat from ear to ear. I can't imagine slitting anyone's throat. No jury is going to convict me. Why not? Because I'm innocent, and you can mark my words on that one. No jury will convict me. That's who I call the confident Jody Arias, right? It, it was pre-trial, I understand that, but that's the, the confidence that was oozing five years ago. Will any of that come out tomorrow when she speaks, we think, for the last time ever in front of this jury? Let me go to uh, Jane Velez Mitchell. Jane, do you, do you think we'll see that confident Jody Arias when it's time for her allocution tomorrow? I think she's going to be poised. I think she's going to get up there and be confident. And I think in some way, shape, or form, she's going to try to give the world the finger. That's really what I think she's ultimately going to do. She's going to remain defiant. She's going to keep her position as the martyr, the wronged person, the victim, the pity party. She can do it a number of ways. I think it's possible she may not want to say anything. I mean, what is the ultimate passive aggressive, withholding, hostile thing to do? Not say anything. So there is a possibility. Perhaps that's why they went into that chambers, because maybe the judge was even saying, Girl, you've got to say something. Your life is on the line. <laughs> and she might say, hey, I'll think about it. Mon Who knows? Uh, Monica Lindstrom, do you think we'll see the confident Jody Arias tomorrow? 
You know, Vinny, I don't know about that, but following up on what Jane just said, everybody's ripping on the defense attorneys and that they're doing a horrible job and they're the ones throwing tantrums and throwing up their hands and saying, we give up. But I think maybe it's the confident Jody that they had to go back in chambers for because the defense attorneys are telling the judge, look, she won't let us do this. She won't let us call the witnesses. She won't let us call her mom or her family. And that's what we need to do to try to save her life. But Jody's sitting there being very confident, saying, I don't want you to. I'm not going to allow it. And they had to go back in chambers to put that on the record to protect themselves against an ineffective assistance of counsel claim and perhaps limit some of the appeal issues. So I think we might see later that there was some confidence there. But I agree with what Jane said. Monica, uh, Mike Galano, got to go to you, Mike. Will we see a confident Jody Arias in the courtroom tomorrow, and will we see that confidence come out during this allocution? I believe so. Yeah, I, I think so. I'm telling you, I saw the look in her eye. I think there's a confidence about her that this is her time. This is her grand finale. Now, I think we're going to get a little bit of everything besides confident Jody. I think we'll get emotional Jody. We'll get meek, frail Jody. We'll get a little bit of a defiant Jody. But confidence, absolutely. Darren Kavanoke, I took the tape off. I made a mistake, yeah. so go ahead. Well, and this, this relates back. I'm thinking about what Monica was pointing out about some of the tactical decisions. And if what she says is true, it really is the lunatics running the asylum. You know, there are certain decisions that clients get to make, like an absolute right to testify or not to testify. And then there are certain tactical and strategic decisions that are up to the lawyer, even if it's against their client's wishes. And I'll have to defer to Monica about what the Arizona law is on this point. But if all of this is happening because Jody is saying that she doesn't want her mother or her brother to get up on the stand, that is two scoops of crazy. That is... <laughs> all right. She may have told her family not to do it. Yeah, she may have done... She I think she may because the family does she want to testify. A lot more after dark here on HLN. You know, we're talking about Jody a lot, but really what happens, we should be talking about whether this case gets reversed on appeal, and I see some appealable issues. We may have to discuss them with Vinny. Ma'am, were you crying when you were shooting him? I don't remember. Were you crying when you were stabbing him? I don't remember. How about when you cut his throat? Were you crying then? I don't know. So take a look then. And you're the one that did this, right? Yes. And you're the same individual that lied about all this, right? Yes. Well, so then take a look at it. <laughs> the Jody Arias cry, ladies and gentlemen. Kind of reminds me of Meg Strickler. <laughs> Just a few hours, just a few minutes ago. But, you know, here's my question for you. Yes or no? Will Jody Arias cry on the stand or when she addresses the jury tomorrow? Yes, no. Real or fake? Well, well, yeah. Is it real or fake? Real or fake. Good question. All right. Well, well let, let's put it this way. Her version of crying. Yes, no. Her version? And these two are just opting out. Okay. Here we go. No tears. No tears. Noel, let me come over to you. You say no. Whoa. Wait, wait, can you get in close to this for a second? First of all, Noelle, who's our longtime juror, show them your ears. You see those little skulls on her ears? See that? Yeah. Those earrings? Death wow, you mean business tonight. Okay, you say no. No, this is her moment. She's going to shine. She's going to go out with a bang, but it's got to be without tears. Because tears are going to show a little bit of weakness. So if she really wants to do her stand and say... This is me, this is my movie, this is my life. She's going to do, you know, she's going to stand there proud. So not even the fake crying? No, no. Okay. If you're going to go out with a bang, you're going to go out, but you're going to be confident about it. Okay, and let me check my panel here. We had a yes here. Oh, she's absolutely going to do the crocodile tears for sure, for sure, for sure. Because that's going to be her opportunity to get someone 
even that one person to have some kind of sympathy for her. It but might Chantal, be a mother. can they see through that, even if it's crocodile t She's standing a couple feet see, away from them. They're going to definitely see through it. But as a mom, sometimes you may have compassion because she's somebody's daughter. Mm -hmm. So maybe that fakeness may get to somebody's heart. You know what I find interesting about our jury tonight, guys? They are all talking about how Jody may speak to one or two individual jurors who she can sway. And if she does that, yeah. she might save her life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and we, have to, we have to remember yes. how you can save your life that right. way under this scenario. You get, you get a hung jury here. The, all 12 cannot agree one way or another. That's a victory for the defense because then the prosecutor has just one more chance to convince 12 people to send her to death row. So if they hang two juries, it's the same result as all 12 saying life for Jody Arias. So that's significant. But let's talk about the tears. Yeah. Do you think we're going to see, you know, the same type? She has had, I've seen water come down here. I, and I, don't, I don't know if I want to call it crying tears, whatever it is. Will we see that level of emotion without her being questioned by anybody, just her getting up and talking? I yes. Think she's going to go all over the place. She's going to be just like I just showed you, I mean, she's going to be crying one minute, and then she might morph into a little more confidence at some yeah. point, and then kind of move over this way, and then be over that way. I mean, so you're going to see the rain. She'll laugh. I she'll cry. Yes. She'll be angry. Yes. I think you got a better chance of her channeling Al Pacino to say, you're out of order, Judge. This whole trial's out of order. You know, since we're going back a couple decades. Well, I think that I think she's going to read the jury. I think she's going to stand there. I think she's going to take this quick survey and whatever's going on. You think on, she's going to work the men or the women? Because there's eight gonna, men, four women. She's going to work the men. She only needs one. But mm -hmm. my question, Vinny, is that if they get a hung jury on this, they have to impanel a second jury right. mm -hmm. for the sentencing phase. How in the world will you ever find right. a jury that hasn't been watching this? Yeah, and well, we'll wait till October. Right. We'll do it in October. Yes. Yeah, this Try fall. It out a little bit longer. Monica Lindstrom, do you think there's going to be tears? I do, Vinny. I think that she will cry just like she has in the past. Whether you think it's real or not, I think she'll do the same. But what I want to see, what I'm looking at, is her family and her mother. Joey is fa or Jody is fairly stoic, and so is her family. I have yet to see any of them cry in the courtroom. I want to know, is her mother going to cry? We would think that she will, but... Will she? Because she hasn't at all, and her dad clearly hasn't cried, and I haven't seen that anywhere. So I want to see that because I think that will affect the jury. Jane Velez Mitchell, what do you think the emotional vibe is going to be during that allocution that she gives? Well, I think that Monica just made a very interesting point. I think she's kind of kind of used this um, opportunity to sort of make a speech and to talk to her family and to sort of um, address the world, as it were. I don't know if she's actually going to be directed in a cunning fashion toward the jurors. I think she probably feels she's kind of lost them already and is now sort of addressing the world at large. And this is part of her grandiosity and narcissism that she sees herself now as this famous person. We know the prosecutor talked about how she signed her manuscript, which is really her journal, in the event that she would become famous. So now I think she sees herself as that person, and it's going to be like uh, kind of the State of the Union. She's going to really tell the world how she feels about life. Yeah, and, I, I, and I'm not sure what the emotional vibe is going to be inside that courtroom tomorrow. And, and it could go one way, it could go another. But I know tonight where everyone's emotions are, mm -hmm. and, and our thoughts and prayers tonight are with all the victims and their families, all those who have been impacted by today's devastating tornado in Oklahoma. Uh, HLN will have complete coverage in the morning with Robin Mead and Morning Express. of stress or fog, how do you recall what happened in those moments if it affects your memory? I don't recall clearly what happens in those moments um, as far as details, every detail. I just, sometimes I have a general sense of what's going on and sometimes I don't. But as far as the fog goes, it's more, again, just words that are being spoken or screamed or yelled 
and that sort of processing that sort of thing. Um, physical things I can remember because I, I feel them physically. Um, I can remember what I feel internally and emotionally as well, but it's more the, the words that are being spoken. That's the Jody we all know. It makes sense to her, it doesn't make sense to us. And I don't think it made sense to the jury, and that's why she was found guilty. But you know what I was thinking? Ladies and gentlemen, do you feel sorry for Jody Arias? Just tell me yes or no. 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 Hold up your sign. Don't. I, I know you want to say no. <laughs> Hold up your sign. Yes or no. Yes or no. We got half of the people voting, and Rip's kind of opting out there. We have a lot of no's. You're wavering, Janet. I'm going to come back. Why did you delay there, Rip? You don't feel sorry for her. Uh, part of me thinks she does have some mental issues. Mm-hmm. And part of me, and that's not sympathy for what she did, but it's just looking at someone that is just so bizarre and wondering what, what makes her act like that. I mean, it's beyond me how someone, and, and, and during this trial, the, mm -hmm. the thing that just infuriates me is her lack of remorse, and I don't understand it. And we still don't see it. Now, Janet, you say yes. I see you're turning your sign, but originally you said yes. And tonight you've been talking a lot about how she has her own special sense of yeah. crazy. Yeah, I think she's just twisted. And I think that she, it's not like she's been a bully her whole life. And then all of a sudden, you know, she's got, she got caught. Like, this is just something that happened. So I don't feel sorry for her. I hope that she gets exactly what she deserves. But I do, in a way, she's just twisted. And I just think that she's not fit for society. Mm -hmm. And I just think it happened... Like right away, she has been it, like this her whole life. Okay, but something happened that made her twisted. Yeah. Vinny's got a smoking gun. Vinny, what do you have? All right, uh, Ryan, ladies and gentlemen, the jury, time to reveal tonight's smoking gun. Now, we don't know exactly what's going to happen tomorrow, but there is one thing I know for sure. Take a look. Okay. If Jody Arias <laughs> prepares a written wow. statement that she plans to read, Here's what I know for sure. What happened? It revealed too early, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I've got to work on my smoking gun. <laughs> All right. There it is. Anyway, what I know is that if she prepares a written statement, she won't be wearing her glasses because she can't read with her glasses on. Take a look. Do we have the video? <laughs> That's the smoking gun. <laughs> All right. She, oh, there you go. To actually read, Jody Arias needs to take the glasses off, ladies and gentlemen. And that's a big question, Ryan, I have. Mm -hmm. Will she or won't she be wearing glasses tomorrow? Aha. Santa, what do you think? She's going to be wearing glasses? If she's going to read something, she won't be wearing them because those glasses are fake. I don't think those glasses are prescription or anything. I think they were just to make her look like a little uh, innocent little girl. Just like the whatever. ponytails and all exactly. that kind of stuff. Exactly. You know what? Maybe she's got those uh, NBA player style glasses. They wear them just for fashion. Yeah, well, here's if the thing, though. If, if she has points. a written statement, if she prepares a written statement, she can't wear those glasses. Jane Velez Mitchell, glasses or no glasses tomorrow? Well, I think she might do the take them on, take them off kind of look, because that's coquettish. You know, it's kind of like when the librarian lets down her hair. So I, I think that you make a good point. She loves to journal, so she may actually have some kind of a journal that she'll open up. You don't know. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. She could be reading a poem tomorrow because she's written poems. So there's a possibility that we could hear some rhyming. Honestly, I don't know. Monica Lindstrom, glasses or no glasses? Well, Vinny, I think that she will wear her glasses because it will help camouflage or hide the fact that there's not a whole lot of moisture coming down from those eyes. Mm. Darren Kavanaugh, do you, do you agree? Do you, do you think? I think they add IQ points myself. Maybe I'm right, a little right. biased. Uh, <laughs> you know, Here's the deal. If she actually writes out her allocution, she really is dead woman walking. Because if she thinks she's going to win these jurors over with logic-based arguments, 
she's playing in the wrong area. This so is, she's gonna this is a thing. heart mission. It's not a head mission. She's what got. What makes you think that she's gonna write something down that makes logic? So if she writes down, I, I she know, has it's logic. Like the crazy world. Yeah, I, I think something here. Yeah, that just... would be a departure. She has <laughs> logic there. But my point is, Vinny, who cares? whether she has glasses on or doesn't have glasses on. It's going to come down to what she says. Mm. Well, the, the thing is, though, she didn't wear glasses until this trial. And it does change her appearance a lot inside the courtroom. I and I think that's something she's always thinking about. But we'll see. Again, 1230 tomorrow. What are we, like uh, 13 hours away from this thing? Jody Arias, her last stand, her last opportunity. And you'll see it live on HLN. This is going to be Jody's press conference, so I'm going to put my glasses on, have my box of tissues ready, as she will, because she's going to play it for all it's worth. Is that the hardest part, thinking about your mom? Yeah. My mom and my whole family. Yeah, that's difficult. As far as my mom, I feel like I don't deserve her. She's been a saint, and I've not treated her very well. Wow. What's going to happen tomorrow? What is Jody Arias going to say? What should she say? Well, last week, Darren Kavanoke gave a great rendition of what she should say. Mm. Yeah. Tonight, why don't you go over to the jury as Jody Arias, wait, as Jody Arias, <laughs> and tell them what she will say. And will he or not wear the glasses? No, oh my God. he's got the glasses on. So many on. choices to so make. So many choices. This is what Jody Arias will say tomorrow. I loved Travis Alexander. And I know that at the end of my life, Travis and I are going to be together forever. And if you choose to send me to be with him before God would naturally take me, then that's a choice that I must live with, but you must too. Because only God can make a life, and only God should take a life. And I've made mistakes. I've got blood on my hands. And I hope that no one ever needs to feel what it feels like to have blood on their hands. But if you send me to see Travis now, you'll know what it feels like to have blood on your hands too. Interesting argument, oh. because it's an admission in some ways, but then it also appeals to the idea of, can you institute the death penalty? What do you think about that? Would you, after that argument, Give him life. Give Jody Arias life. Yes or no? No, they hate me more. Everybody hold him up high. I can't always see him. Let's see. Okay, we've got three yeses, mostly noes. Now, Chantal, I saw you here because you were almost getting a little bit emotional. I couldn't tell when you were looking at Darren. You were being swayed a little bit. Eh, not really. <laughs> no? She looked like she was having a reaction. Was I was kind of little, impressed. He was a little, you know, I, I, he did bring me in yeah. for a minute. And then I realized, okay, it's Jody. Get out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. But he did. He did pull me in for a moment. But then I realized, okay, this is Jody. Cray, cray. So, you know, then I went back to, yeah. I Your instincts that. kicked yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's go to Marsha over here. You said no, and you were pretty, you were pretty sure about it. I think the jury has already made up its mind. Mm -hmm. And whatever she says is not going to be believed. And I think she's going to play it for death. She will get up there and she will plead for death. Maybe nothing like Darren's argument. But you know what I liked about your argument very much, Darren? That it's, it's one thing to say to people, I want death. Give me the death penalty and make that happen. It's another thing for them to feel like mm -hmm. they have to make that judgment for themselves. Yeah. That's a tough one, Vinny. Yeah, but the bottom line here is that Juan Martinez is going to tell this jury mm -hmm. that for they're it. not sending her to death. Mm -hmm. It's not their decision. It was Jody Arias' decision. Yeah, she made the yeah, choice that's right. after Dark continues. Yeah. <laughs> but it isn't. Well, 
Jody sings Silent Light, but maybe she should sing Call Me Maybe, because what didn't the jury call her? They didn't call her the defendant. They called her Jody. Can you send her to death on a first name basis? I don't know. If Jody Arias makes it to death row, it'll be years before she's executed. It is 12 years on average between the time that someone is convicted, sentenced, and executed in the state of Arizona. I'm going to tell you two the story and put it in your ass. What's that? I'm going to tie you to a tree and put it in your ass. Oh my gosh. That is so debasing. I like it. Does <laughs> it, it tie your arms around the tree? Blindfold you. And, uh, put the picture, the camera on a timer while I'm Oh my gosh. You are full of ideas. My gosh, those phone sex tapes. Remember those? And that was just part of Jody's 18 days on the stand. Mm -hmm. So I got a quick thing for our jury here. How long do you think Jody Arias will take for her elocution? I don't think she's going to take the stand. Okay, mm -hmm. not getting up. As long as they'll let her. As long as they'll let her. As long as the judge will let her stay up there. Okay. 45 minutes. Less than 15 minutes. Wow. 30. She's a long talker. 30. And 30's long. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see about an hour and a half. <laughs> hour and a half. Yes, sir. All right. That's a pretty healthy. Mm -hmm. that, that'd be long. I think it's even longer than that. Three hours and 15 minutes. Oh, three She's hours gonna go and 15 all day. minutes. Yep. Wow. Well, again, I think it's going to be short. I'm saying five minutes. Five minutes. Mm -hmm. Five minutes. Not a lot to say. I'm with her. Five minutes. Okay. Five minutes. Wow. 15 minutes short and to the point. All right. Zero. Zero, not mm -hmm. getting up there. We've got a couple saying she's not going to get up there, a couple who says as long as the judge wants and then we're all over the map, you never know. The judge has given her no mm -hmm. limit, you know. Mm -hmm. The judge yeah. has not limited her, so yeah. she can keep going she and go. Anything else she was on the stand yeah. for 18, 18 days. days. That's approximately 5,347 minutes. That is long. So how long tomorrow? I agree with the fellow over there, three and a half hours. Three and a half hours, she's going yeah, long. She's going to go on and on A and filibuster. On. A filibuster. <laughs> Darren Kavanaugh, I don't know, it's, it's not like your last meal where you can go to an all-you-can-eat buffet. I, I think she's going to be done in 15. I'm going on the shorter side. Down in 15. I say two hours. Two hours. And if she could stretch it over lunch somehow, she'd do it and come back <laughs> and regroup. I really think she would try to do that. If she could strategically figure out how to delay it and then start it and then stretch it over lunch so she can kind of regroup. I agree because I think she, would she do knows once she, she stops, stops, she's done. Yeah, Linda Kelly Bond, what do you think? How long will her allocution be tomorrow? I'm still waiting for my kudos for getting the verdict right on time, so I don't want to play. <laughs> what did you predict? Bravo. You got it right. She got it right. She always gets it right. But you're not. You're going to give us how long she's going to talk. Man, we're not letting you off the hook here. How long uh, is this elocution? Minutes, Twelve minutes, and she's going to collapse in the middle of it, but it'll be stretched out. Oh, so you, a knockdown. Yeah. <laughs> she predicted the same thing. Juror number one said she's going to pass out midway through, right? <laughs> I wonder, Ryan, what happens if she passes out? She has a migraine. You give her some medicine, and then you send her away, and the jury comes back the next day, and you just start the whole thing all no, over again. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because we've got that kind of time, right? <laughs> the judge is saying next Wednesday. Next, yeah, she'll, you know, if that happens, she'll fall out. The judge I just say, oh, no problem. We'll start next Wednesday. I mean, it's always these delays that just... Well, I think that's a possibility. I would, yeah. but I would have made her get get up today. Yeah. When all of that finished, I was no. not adjourned court. No, we should have gone today. you are going to do that trial twice, which no. you never want to do. No, no, I don't think so. I mean, how, how, is, it how is it presidential to yeah, her? Yeah, I know what you're no, saying. No, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's late. Uh, to her, and how is that a basis for appeal if you say, because she's no she's, she's had have five to get years to think of this moment, yeah. and tomorrow is the moment. Yeah. 12 30. You will see it live here on HLN. Don't miss it. Hey, tomorrow morning, Ryan, guess where I'm going to be? Morning Express. Morning Express. Tomorrow morning, I'll see you with Rob and Mead. In the meantime, thanks to our jury, Ryan, our crew here, everybody out in Arizona. Great job, everyone. Tomorrow, big day. Jody's last stand.